What's up, I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and on this episode I'm going to be reviewing the Canon 100 to 400 millimeter lens that's an f4.5 to 5.6 with image stabilization and it's version 2. Let's check it out. So not so long ago, Canon released version 2 of the 100-400mm to 400 millimeter lens. Version 1 was one of my least favorite lenses I've ever used. Um, and it really wasn't about the image quality. And yes, the image quality wasn't 100% there, but it was about the style. You might remember that lens was a pump action. You pumped it, and it was really awkward to shoot. And it just didn't work for me. It didn't feel right, and I had a hard time shooting it. So I was pretty excited when they came out with 100-400. to 400 version 2, but I was most excited about the fact that now it's a, a more standard spinny zoom. So you've got this spinny normal zoom. How fantastic is that? You still have the external, you know, external zoom. It all packs down and then zooms out and twists rather than having it all internally like the 70 to 200. But it's much better as a twisting lens. I don't know what they were thinking with the pump action. It just doesn't make any sense why they did that. So. Let's look at the lens itself and then we'll talk a little bit about specs and then we'll bring it out into the field in the Galapagos Islands where I'm going to give it a proper on location review and show you some of the files from the Galapagos Islands as well within this review. So um, yeah, let's look at the lens itself starting at the top and working its way down. It's got this lens hood which is ET83D which is a fairly substantially sized lens hood. It's got the snap here on the side to twist it off, which is fantastic. My 70 to 200 version one doesn't have that snap and the lens hood always slips off. So it's really nice to have that snap in like that. Another cool feature to this that videographers are really gonna love is it's got an open window here that you can slide this open. What that does is if you're shooting variable ND filters, you can still manipulate your variable ND with the lens hood on, which is a really, really cool thing to be able to do. For photographers, it really doesn't do much at all. Um, that's the front of the lens. It's a 77 millimeter thread length, which for me is perfect because all my lenses are 77 millimeters except for my 50 millimeter, which means that I only need one filter system, one adapter system, and I can buy all the same polarizers and variable NDs and stuff like that for all my lenses. The 70 to 200 is also 77. The 60 to, 16 to 35 is also 77. So it's really nice that all the lenses are kind of standardized at that 77 millimeter thread length. Let's move back here again. Uh, as I mentioned, you've got the, the spinning zoom now. You don't have the pump action. And another cool feature to it is you have, here it says smooth or tight. And right now it's set on smooth, which means that the zoom is quite easy, it's quite loose. In fact, if you hold it upside down like that, it will come down on itself, which, of course, could pro cause problems if you're set up on something like, say, photographing the moon. In which case, you can twist this little um, ring here to tight, and then all of a sudden it's really tight and much harder to zoom. And it has its benefits, absolutely having the tight because you could be locked on a subject and wanting to capture video of a subject zoomed in and you don't want that lens slipping or moving or anything like that. So I think that's a really good feature having both smooth and tight options. I think I shot mostly on smooth when I was shooting on the monopod or handheld and I shot tight anytime I was on the tripod. Moving back here, you have the focus ring, and the focus ring is great material, it's easy to grab, and I found e when you're shooting, it was really quite easy to both focus and zoom at the same time, even though it's quite a big lens. So I didn't have a problem with that. Um, the material is fantastic, it's really top-notch material. Let's move back to this part of the lens. You have options for uh, full zoom, or, or full focus, or three meters. So what that does is if you have it at three meters, it's only going to search the focus on the autofocus back to three meters before starting to hunt. Most lenses autofocus from the start to the back. So if you have to focus all the way to the, the very beginning, it takes longer to hunt and to, hunt, to find that wildlife or whatever you're focusing on. So if you're, if you're shooting things that you know are going to be more than three meters away, say you're on an African safari or somewhere like the Galapagos Islands shooting um, birds in flight and you need faster focus, you can flip it over to three meters so that it's not going to take as long to find the focus. You're going to have faster autofocus and capabilities. And down here you have your options for autofocus and manual focus. 
Then you have your stabilization on or off. Obviously, if you're a videographer and you're on a tripod, you probably want stabilization off so it doesn't create any, any movement. Um, for photographers, handheld, the stabilizer is fantastic on this lens. And it's one of the features that Canon really improved on not only this lens, but a lot of their lenses, the 16 to 35 as well. The autofocus or the image stabilization on this lens is ridiculous. And when I'm out in the field, I'm going to probably show you some footage and video footage to show you the difference, but just testing it around and playing around in the room, I was able to shoot uh, one over 50 at 400 millimeters and still get really sharp images. And that's unheard of. I've never been able to do that before. Even on my 70 to 200 millimeter, if I'm shooting at one over 50, it's probably not super sharp. So the auto uh, image stabilization in this lens is next level. And again, that's another thing that videographers are really gonna love if they're forced to shoot handheld at any time. Um, down here we have stabilizer modes. You have one, that's if you're hand holding and you're shooting and you might be a little bit wobbly. You have mode two and that's for panning. So if you're panning a subject and the subject's moving, but you don't want it to correct the movement because you're trying to create movement yourself by panning. And then three is a little bit of both. So three is gonna, is gonna help you with panning and the bouncingness and, and your own handheld motion. The final thing I'll talk about in terms of the lens makeup itself is the, is the tripod collar, which is really fantastic. You have this ring here, you can loosen that up and move it. So I know a lot of guys like to have their tripod collar up on top so that they can hold their, their camera like this as they walk. And if you decide then you need to put it on a tripod, it's just a little quick twist and then tighten. And really, it's super simple. You also have this option down here to, to just take the foot off. So you can twist this off and just pull the foot off without taking anything else off, which is really nice as well if you really need to do something quick like uh, you just, you're on a tripod and you need to get that thing off quick. Of course, most tripods now have quick releases, so it's not really necessary, but it's still nice to have. So let's talk a little bit about the specs of the lens. Um, it's 100 to 400, 100, so it's obviously gonna be a little bit on the heavy side, but I haven't found it to be insanely heavy. It's about 1.6 kilos with a tripod collar attached or a little bit less with that off. I've definitely been, been able to handhold the lens and still get sharp images. Having that nice stabilization system in there definitely helps. It's not ultraly heavy. I really don't feel like I'm shooting a really heavy lens. It's completely unlike something like the 400 millimeter f2.8, which is obviously a beast. This is much lighter and easier to handhold. Also compared to the 200 to 400, which is a super large lens, very versatile um, and nice to be able to handhold something that goes all the way to 400 millimeters and still get sharp images. The lens itself is f4.5 to 5.6, which means that at 100 millimeters, you'll be able to shoot a fastest aperture of f4.5. Whereas if you're all the way zoomed in at 400 millimeters, the fastest f-stop you'll be able to shoot is 5.6. Now, for a lot of people, that's not fast enough. A lot of people that like shooting low light birds, for example, they need more speed. Or people that are shooting indoors a lot, they need more speed. But if you're shooting a lot of wildlife outside, African Safari for one, or uh, the Galapagos Islands two, that's probably fast enough. In fact, I would think, I would guess that if you're close enough to the subject of wildlife, you usually want to be shooting around f6.3 to 8 anyways, um, or your depth of field is just going to be too narrow. So I don't foresee that being a massive issue as long as you're shooting outside. So one of the things that's really exciting for me about this lens is the minimum focusing distance. A lot of telephoto lenses, a lot of telephoto zoom lenses have trouble focusing really near. So this lens doesn't. The minimum focusing distance is less than a meter, 0 0.98. So basically, if I'm here, I can photograph my foot at 400 millimeters. That's borderline macro when it comes to 400 millimeters. That's a super tight depth of field and fantastic, I think, in the Galapagos Islands when the wildlife is really close. I think I'll be able to get some headshots of birds that look really, really low depth of field, even though I only have f5.6 at 400 millimeters. So the minimum focusing distance is 0 0.98 millimeters, which in feet is like 0.35, something like that. 
just under, actually I think it's under that, just under 3.5 feet. So super, super close focusing distance. And that's something I'm super excited about as I say the word super so much. So finally, to talk about the lens construction itself, this lens has 21 elements in 16 different groups, which is pretty nice. That is it for the spec review. We're going into the field now to the Galapagos Islands, which I'm so stoked about. And we're going to test this lens the way you should test a lens, which is not looking at the specs on paper, but taking it into the field and seeing how it performs. I'm going to be shooting this lens on my 6D exclusively and hopefully I'll get some cool images. So once I get out in the field, I'll have some little, um, some little clips talking about how I feel about it in the field. And then once I'm done that, I'm gonna take it back home and we're going to look at the files on the computer to check the sharpness, to check chromatic aberration, and to check for artifacts, things like that. We're gonna just look at the image quality and see how good it came out or bad it came out. So let's head to the Galapagos Islands. We're going for four days. Let's explore and let's do a better review of this lens. Let's go. So I'm here in the Galapagos Islands and I have the 100 to 400 millimeter lens on and I'm actually really loving this lens and having a hard time going back to my 70 to 200 because I just love having the extra 200 millimeters. I also really haven't felt like I've missed those extra two stops of light with wildlife. Um, with the, the sea lions here, you really need depth of field. You need to be shooting them 6.3, 7.1 anyway. So as long as you got enough light, ha shooting it at 4.5, 5.6 really hasn't been a problem. The other thing I've noticed, yes, I have the tripod set up right now, but the stabilization is unreal. I'm gonna show you a couple clips from some, uh, some landscape I shot earlier today. Uh, the first clip is shot without the image stabilization turned on, and then the second clip has that image stabilization turned on, and the difference is, is mind-blowing. It's completely different. So um, I'm blown away by the image stabilization so far, loving having those extra 200 millimeters. So another one of the things I'm really loving about this 100 to 400 is the fact that it focuses to less than a meter. It's about 900 uh, millimeters it's focusing to, which means that it kind of doubles as a macro in a pinch. I can go to 400 millimeters and be less than a meter away from my subject. I've been able to get some really cool images that way of like textures of iguanas, for example. And even some of these sea lions, I can get really close and get a nice headshot um, from a close distance and give it that macro look and that huge, uh, that really narrow depth the field it makes the lens much more versatile being able to shoot it that close and kind of getting that macro feel to it So I was a little bit worried with this lens that I was going to miss those two stops of light at f4 and f2.8, but the truth is um, I might miss one stop, but even then at 400 millimeters f5.6 or even 6.3, 7.1 is such a narrow depth of field that it's hard with wildlife outside to get everything in focus. So uh, I don't think I've shot a lot at f5.6 even. Most of what I've shot here on the Galapagos Islands is shot at f... 6.3, 7.1, even up to 8 at 400 meters. Just because you're at such a far focal length at 400 millimeters or 300 millimeters and the wildlife is just so close to you. I'm about maybe 4 meters from these blue-footed boobies over there. So I'm done here on the Galapagos Islands. Uh, I think I got some cool images in just 2 or 3 days shooting. Um, 
The sharpness from the back of the camera looks fantastic. It looks like I've got some really sharp images, but of course you've got to get it onto the computer and, and zoom it into 100 percent to see if you've really got it sharp and to see if the lens has really been sharp for you. So um, let's do that. Let's head back to the mainland. We're going to Quito now. So uh, we'll get jump onto the computer there and check the, the sharpness and I'll wrap up this review from there. Let's go. So guys, I'm back. I'm here in the digital darkroom and I thought I would walk you through some of these photos and just talk about some of the things I saw when editing the photos, um, some of my thoughts, some of my concerns, and the things I liked. First of all, um, I'd like to talk about the depth of field. So the one thing I noticed right away with this lens is since you're shooting so close to the subjects, um, since you have that tiny minimum focusing distance, you really have to be care careful with your depth of field. I shot this image, for example, at f8, and the bigger picture, it looks good. But if you zoom in, I missed the focus only slightly. It starts right here. But because I'm so close to the subject, even at f8, it's too narrow a depth of field and you really, 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 really have to be careful with that. So people that are worried uh, that if you're shooting this lens at f5.6 or something like that, f4.5, you're not going to get a nice shallow depth of field. You're going to get that. The lens, because you can get so close to your subjects, really does accentuate that depth of field. So I missed my focus here. Be careful with that when you're shooting so close to a subject. Um, at 400 millimeters. Let's move along to some of these other images. These are some wide angle stuff here um, to another image. And you can see this image came out beautifully. The color comes out amazingly on this lens. Um, and you get really sharp images. I was really not surprised, but really happy with how sharp things came out. Um, and just the level of detail that the lens captured was really fantastic. I'm always a little bit skeptical about these super zoom lenses, the 100 to 400s, f4.5 to 5.6, but the sharpness was definitely not an issue. This lens, this image was shot at uh, f5.6 at 400 millimeters, and I couldn't be happier with how it came out. Um, let's skip ahead again. This talks again about the depth of field and the thing that I, sh I knew I had to be careful with um, after day one was how narrow the depth of field is. This was shot at f5.6 at 400 millimeters and you can see the eye is razor sharp. Everything along the, the, the front of the face of the iguana is sharp. The first set of scales is sharp and then as soon as you get to the second set of scales it's out of focus. So you have to be careful with your depth of field. You really have to get your sharpness right but when you hit your sharpness it's dead on. The detail is beautiful. The sharpness is perfect. I have nothing to complain about there. And the bokeh you get in the background is stunning. I'm a huge fan with of how the bokeh came out. Obviously you're not getting those round bokeh dots like you'd get on an f 1.450 millimeter or something like that but it is a nice smooth buttery bokeh you even get beautiful bokeh in the foreground really happy um skipping along this is f 6.3 i believe at 255 millimeters so it's not super zoomed it's not really a wide open aperture but you still get a nice blurry background here even at 6.3 even at at uh, 255 millimeters so absolutely beautiful at that distance and it brings out the the, the booby here in the foreground really nicely um, again this is talking about that macro feel of the lens I talked about this in the video it's something I really liked about it being able to shoot 400 millimeters I was really close to this subject this was at f6.3 and you can see from here it is sharp as nails and the focus is like right here, right on the eye at 6.3. So if you're thinking I need f2.8, you can't shoot this at f2.8 from that close. If you shot this at f2.8, only this much would be in focus. Very little, if nothing, would be in focus from that distance. Even at 6.3, it's pushing it a little bit, and something like 7.1 would have been a little bit better. But for the look I was going for, it hit the nail on the head. It was perfect. Um, again, talking sharpness, if we look at, at this photo and we zoom in and let it load for a second, you're going to see that the sharpness of this lens is just fantastic. And I was really, really impressed with the sharpness of this 
of this uh, this lens. I actually even think it's sharper than my 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8, which again is is version one, so it's it's not as sharp as version two of that lens. But I was really, really, really pleased with the sharpness of of this 100 to 400 millimeter f 4.5 to 5.6. And as you can tell by this review in general, it's a very positive one. I was really happy with this lens. I'm actually probably going to buy it as soon as I have enough money um, to buy it. Uh, and I'm even considering selling my 70 to 200 um, just because I really, I really, really like this lens. I can't say that enough. I was a huge fan of the 100 to 400. I think it's versatile. It was very sharp. I had no artifacting or chromatic aberration on most of my images that were shot in proper light. And yeah, absolutely thrilled with the lens. I, I really don't have any complaints about it, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by it. And I'm, as I mentioned, really usually skeptical of these super zooms, hundreds to four hundreds. And yeah, that's the review, guys. I enjoyed it. I think you should go out and test this lens. If you get the chance to rent one or borrow one, do it and give it a shot because it really is a lens worth buying in my opinion. Anyways, guys, that's it for the show here today. That's it from the Galapagos Islands. It's been awesome. It's been a really good time. I had an amazing time on this Feel Again in Ecuador project um, in the Galapagos Islands and in Ecuador. I'm off to Colombia now just for one episode and then after Colombia I'm off with Intrepid Travel in Cuba for seven days, eight days and then I have about ten days to explore Cuba on my own and I'm so stoked about that. So lots of really cool stuff coming up on the channel so be sure to stay tuned and stay subscribed. I'll catch you next time. Peace.